Hey, y'all. Welcome to our summer studies again. Uh, my name is David. To my right is Jade playing acoustic with us today for the first time. Uh, we have Georgia to my left, actually. I said, okay, Georgia's to my left. She's singing with me today. Hey, I know I told you last week that we were going to be out in another yard this week. Um, and we actually were. We were at the Ward's house. We were getting ready to worship together. But as we were starting to go through the first song, we got rained out. Yeah, here comes the rain. Okay. Bye! Wait! But thanks to the awesome people like Wes, um, and the wards and everyone who scrambled to run things in and we're like an hour behind schedule right now Wes will probably be up late editing and stuff uh we're able to do here we're able to still worship together uh and the reason we did that even though we got rained out is because we want worship to be a priority um god is all deserving of our worship uh and and we want to lift our voices to him because we know that um so let's turn from the crazy things that are happening in the world and Focus our attention to God and lift his name together. So lift your voices with me, if you will. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that? Your mercy has saved my soul. Now your freedom is all that I know. The old made new. Jesus, when I met you, you called my rescue my sin was heavy but chains break at the weight of your glory i needed shelter i was an orphan now you call me a citizen of heaven when i was broken you were my healing and your love is the air that i'm feeling i have a future my eyes are open
Amen, y'all. Hey, let's continue to lift our voices to him because he's worthy of it. With every breath, with every word I speak, with every step, with every heartbeat, Jesus, let it be for you, for you only. My whole life is all for your glory. With every breath, with every word I speak, with every step, with every heartbeat, Jesus, let it be for you, for you only. My whole life is all for your glory, all for your glory. My life is in your hands. Trust it all, trust it all to you, my dreams and all my plans. Trust it all, trust it all. Forever I'm changed, I'll never be the same. Because of your love, because of your love. Forever I'm changed, I'll never be the same. Because of your love, because of you, Jesus. Whoa, because of you, Jesus. For all my days, God, you are my guide. I give you all, my heart is open wide. Jesus, let it be for you, for you only. My whole life is all for your glory, all for your glory. My life is in your hands. Trust it all, trust it all to you, my dreams and all my plans. Trust it all, trust it all. Forever I change, I'll never be the same. Because of your love, because of your love. Forever I change, I'll never be the same. Because of your love, because of you, Jesus. Whoa, because of you, Jesus. Whoa, whoa. You are everything, everything. You are all I need, all I need. I am forever in love with you. Forever in love with you. Are everything, everything. You are all I need, all I need. I am forever in love with you. Forever. In Trust it all to you, my dreams and all my plans. Trust it all, trust it all. Forever I'm changed, you'll never be the same. Because of your love, because of your love. Forever I'm changed, I'll never be the same. Because of your love, because of you, Jesus. Whoa, because of you, Jesus. Whoa. Chapters 5 through 14. Since we have been united with him in his death, we will also be raised in life as he was. We know that our old sinful selves were crucified with Christ so that sin might lose its power in our lives. We are no longer slaves to sin. For we died with Christ, we were set free from the power of sin. And since we died with Christ, we know we will also live with him. We are sure of this because Christ was raised from death, and he will never die again. Death will no longer has any power over him. When he died, he died once to break 
the power of sin. But now that he lives, he lives for the glory of God. So you also should consider yourselves to be dead to the power of sin and alive to God through Christ Jesus. Do not let sin control the way you live. Do not give it sin. Do not give in to sinful desires. Do not let any part of your body become an instrument of evil to serve sin. Instead, give yourselves completely to God, for you were dead, but now you have new life. So you should use your whole body as an instrument to do what is right for the glory of God. Sin is no longer your master, for you are no longer live under the requirements of the law. Instead, you live under the freedom of God's grace. Lift these words with us together. You unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone. I'm no longer No longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. From my mother's womb, you have chosen. your family your blood flows through my veins I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God I'm no longer a slave to fear fear I am a 
child of God. Y'all bow your heads in prayer with us. Lord, you are good. We are your children. Because of what you've done for us on the cross, we are no longer uh, slaves to sin and fear, uh, but we have your righteousness, Lord, uh, because of what Jesus has done. Uh, So we thank you for that. We praise you for that. You're deserving of our praise, God. Lord, we love you. Uh, I pray as Sophie talks, we'll be able to listen with attentive ears uh, that what she says uh, comes from you and your scripture, uh, and then we'll be able to learn from it, Lord. I pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, My name is Sophia Wakefield. I just graduated from Greenville High School, and as a member of the student leadership team, I have been asked to speak to you all today from the Bible. As you may or may not know, this summer, FCC 180 is learning about some of the Bible's miracles, and I chose to speak about the exorcism of the garrison demoniac, or as I like to call it, Jesus heals demon guy, pigs go bye-bye. This story can be found in several of the Gospels, but for our purposes today, we'll be reading from Matthew 8, 28 to 34. So I encourage you to pull out your Bible or phone and follow along. Okay, let's read together. Verse 28. And when he came to the other side, to the country of the Gadarenes, two demon-possessed men met him, coming out of the tombs so fierce that no one could pass that way. And behold, they cried out, What have you to do with us, O son of God? Have you come here to torment us before the time? Now a herd of many pigs was feeding at some distance from them, and the demons begged him, saying, If you cast us out, send us away into the herd of pigs. And he said to them, Go. So they came out and went into the pigs, and behold, the whole herd rushed down the steep bank into the sea and drowned in the waters. The herdsmen fled, and going into the city, they told everything, especially what had happened to the demon-possessed men. And behold, all the city came out to meet Jesus, and when they saw him, they begged him to leave their region. Okay, let's pray. Dear God, thank you so much for today. Thank you for our youth program and for all the tech resources and people power that it takes to put all of this together. I pray that you give me the words to say and that you keep the minds and hearts of everyone listening open to hear from you. Help us use this time to refocus on you, Lord. It's in your name I pray. Amen. Now, after reading through that passage, you may be feeling sort of like, huh, pigs, demons, pig demons? Or even like, oh, okay, cool, like, good for Jesus. I'm glad he healed those guys, but so what? If that's you, don't worry, because that's where I was too. (laughs) But I found that if you just give it a careful read through and work through it a little bit, God actually has a lot to say in these few verses. So let's start with some brief context to better understand the story. Right before our passage starts, Jesus had been traveling with his disciples and the crowd that formed and tagged along. He proclaimed the arrival of the kingdom and verified it by performing miracles. One of these miracles was actually the one David talked about last week where Jesus calmed a storm. Shout out to you, David. (laughs) Okay, so now we're back at the first verse of our passage today. Let's get into it. Verse 28. And when he came to the other side, to the country of the Gadarenes, two demon-possessed men met him coming out of the tombs. Okay, quick pause. In case you're confused like I was, these men are not coming out from underground, not zombies. They're just in the graveyard, hanging out. You know, back to the Bible. Sorry about that. Coming out of the tombs so fierce that no one could pass that way. So fierce were these demons, in fact, that they forced the men to live around tombstones, literally amongst the dead. And according to Mark, they also forced them to break the chains that had been protecting themselves from themselves, and they even made each other cut themselves with stones. These demons are really living up to Satan's goal of stealing, killing, and destroying, like it says in John 10.10. That's all a picture of their lives and our lives without Jesus. Verse 29. And behold, 
they cried out, What have you to do with us, O Son of God? Have you come to torment us before the time? The time here being judgment day. Now a herd of many, according to Mark, about 2,000 pigs were feeding at some distance from them. And the demons begged him, saying, If you cast us out, send us away into the herd of pigs. Here they're basically just saying, Okay, fine, if you take us out of this guy, don't kill us, just put us in those pigs over there. Now, if you're not careful, you'll actually miss the important implications that this has. First off, this herd would have been crazy huge in value to its owners. Despite this, however, in verse 31, Jesus said to them, Go. So they came out, went into the pigs, and behold, the whole herd rushed down the steep bank into the sea and drowned in the waters. To us today, we might look at that and say, man, it's too bad that all those pigs died. But to the Gadarenes, this loss looks very different, exorbitant even. A herd this size could have been the entire villages. If you're still struggling to see it from that perspective, here's a story my dad told me about it. A Bible translator in a remote village was helping a local man translate the Bible into his language. And when they came across this passage, the man was astonished. You see, in his village, the value of a man's life was one pig. This perspective is similar to that of the gatherings of this passage. Yet, Jesus still said, go. Then, in verse 33, the herdsmen fled, and going into the city, they told everything, especially what had happened to the demon-possessed men. And behold, all the city came out to meet Jesus, and when they saw him, they begged him to leave their region. Wow. There was a lot packed in those few verses, but we should be asking ourselves, what can we learn from this? One of the main takeaways I got was that Jesus is trying to point out and shift our priorities. Some people point at this passage and say they're enraged because Jesus evidently didn't care about their material well-being. But think of it this way. To Jesus, healing this man was worth not one pig, not ten pigs, but two thousand pigs. Frankly, to Jesus, any man is worth all the pigs in the world. He is trying to point out here that the priorities of the Gerardines, as well as our priority, is placed on material things and wealth, and he wants to help us shift our priority into alignment with God's priorities. Friends, at the end of this story, the herdsmen told everyone what happened to them, and in Mark's version of the story, Jesus even commands the now free man to go home to your friends and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. That's in Mark 5:19. Our calling is the same. We are called to align our priorities, like what we think, say, do, spend money on, spend time on, and we're supposed to align those with God's. In doing so, our hearts will long to share the gospel, to share how Jesus has changed us, to tell the story. I implore you all today to think of where your priorities don't align with God's, where you're caring about your pigs, and maybe start caring about and for others' souls by sharing how Jesus has changed you. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you for giving it to us to guide us and to change us. Help us use it throughout our day to, with school and with family and wherever you call us to shape us into who you call us to be. We love you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Satan fall like lightning I saw darkness run for cover But the miracle that I just can't get over My name is registered in heaven I believe in signs and wonders I have resurrection power Yes, I do
story 